Greetings, programmers. Once a program has set up the interface to a disk file, it is as easy to read data from disk as it is from a keyboard. Reading from a disk has two advantages. One, you don't need to keep typing in the data each time you run the program. Two, you don't need a prompt message asking the user to input the data. The Java source file and balancers.txt files used in the discussion are at program-info.net slash java slash downloads slash read text file. In the early days of operating system development, Doug McElroy was instrumental in the concept of Stream I.O. The idea is that data flows from one part of the computer to another, and one program to another. The simplest form is from a keyboard to a program to a display. Here is some code that displays a prompt message and then reads an integer score from the keyboard. Then another prompt message to enter a Java string to read a name. The top of the program needs import java.util.scanner. The body of the program needs to create a scanner object. Here the object is named stdin and it is set to the system input which typically is the keyboard. Two variables are declared, an integer for score and a Java string for name. A prompt is displayed requesting the user to input the score, stdin dot next int, open close parentheses, reads the score from the keyboard and places it into the variable named score. The second prompt requests the user to enter a name. The user entered the name Dan Space McElroy. I just happened to be the user when the program was run. Let's see what happens when using scanner. The data that is going to the input buffer is 83 and then the code for the enter key. Then the characters for my name and again the enter key. stdin.nextint open close parentheses skips over any leading white space characters such as space tab or the code for the enter key that may be in the input buffer. The ASCII characters 8 and 3 are read from the input buffer by stdin.nextint, which stops collecting characters when it sees a white space character. The ASCII characters 8 and 3 are converted into an integer since nextint was called, and the integer value of 83 is then placed into the variable named score by the equal sign assignment operator. The characters 8 and 3 are removed from the input buffer. The ASCII code for the enter key was left in the input buffer by the previous call to stdin.nextint. Leading whitespace characters are discarded by stdin.next, open close parentheses, which then reads the characters DAN from the input buffer and stops as soon as it sees a whitespace character which happens to be the space between my first and last name. Only the word Dan is placed into the string variable. The space and McElroy are left in the input buffer in case the program wants to read them. If I would have used stdin.nextline open close parentheses, then I would have captured everything that was still in the input buffer instead of stopping when a white space character was reached. To make it easier to write programs, it was decided to use a common interface for all devices. The most complex device is the disk drive, so all other devices would use an interface similar to a disk drive or a subset of that interface. This makes it easy to input data from a disk file in place of a keyboard. Java can do many things besides just reading the file. Files can be open for writing, append and write, seek, rewind, close, reopen, open in text mode, open in binary mode, etc. This discussion only covers how to open and read a text file. More information is available in other discussions. The file must be opened before it can be used by a program. The open command establishes a connection between the disk file system and the program. Two names for a file. The file has a name on the disk. The file object in the program has another name that must meet the requirements for naming objects and variables. The code above the dashed line shows an example of reading data from the keyboard. The first thing here is to instantiate a scanner object. 
the scanner object is named SDDIN, which is short for Standard Input, you could name the scanner object any name you wish, such as Keyboard, KBD, etc. The next thing to notice is that a prompt message is needed when reading from the keyboard. System.out.println is used to display the prompt message, enter price and quantity, to let the user know to type something on the keyboard. SDDIN.next double open close parentheses and SDDIN.next int are used to read floating point data and then read an integer and store into the price and quantity variables. The code after the dashed line reads data from the disk. Two things to be looked at. One, the comment slash slash equal 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 open the file as int file is just a placeholder for more code that needs to be entered here. And two, a prompt message is not used since we will be reading data that is already on the disk and we don't need to ask that it be entered at the keyboard. We need to make a connection between the file on the disk and our program. This is called opening the file. Instead of opening system.in, which is the keyboard, I am going to open a file on the disk named bouncers.txt. I need a couple of new import statements at the top of the program for java.io.file and java.io.io exception. The other thing I need to do is to place the attempt to open the file inside a try block. I named the scanner object infile, although I could have given it any legal name. I called it infile, which at the moment is only an uninitialized reference, but it will be initialized when infile equal new scanner open close parenthesis is executed. All sorts of things may prevent us from opening a file. Maybe the file does not exist, or we have not selected the correct folder. Maybe another program has the file open already. It is locked, preventing us from opening it. Maybe the file is on a network, and the network is not available at the moment. Maybe the file is marked as read-only and we are trying to open it in write mode. If the open attempt fails, an exception will be thrown and the program will jump to the catch block. If the file open is successful, you can access the data on the disk using the infile object or whatever name you gave the object. Once the file has been opened, you no longer reference the file by its name on the disk. You should be able to read from a text file line by line without any problem. However, if you plan to read the data and treat each line as a record that contains several separate fields, it is very important to know how the data is formatted. The balances.txt file has several records, each with an integer for account number, a string of characters for a customer name, and a floating point value for a balance. Since this is really a text file, the account number and balance fields are a collection of ASCII alphanumeric characters that look like integers and floating points to people, but are only converted into integers and double when calling next int and next double methods. To make things easier on the program, I placed an underscore character in the customer names to separate the last name from the first name. This way, the name in the file is a single string of characters. Although we could possibly skip the underscore characters and then read the last name followed by another read for the first name. Unfortunately, this completely falls apart for multi-word last names such as De La Cruz or even Mac space Elroy when people put a space between Mac and Elroy. I'm even providing an example of Austin Steve Sr. with a suffix of Sr. after the name. Here is a new topic. A fully qualified file name includes both a path and file name. For example, quote, slash users slash dan slash desktop slash balances dot text, quote, has the path name slash users slash dan slash desktop and the actual file name of balancers dot text. To make the program easier to use and make it work regardless of whether the program is on a Unix, Mac OS system, or a Windows system, I am providing some code that will build the path name starting from slash users and then get the login name from the operating system's environment variables followed by the path name specified by the 
file path constant and the file name specified by the file name constant. Just to make things more interesting for us, although Unix came before Windows, Microsoft chose to use a different name for its list of environment variables for the user's login. Unix-based systems use the environment variable USER, and Microsoft uses the environment variable named USERNAME, username. macOS is Unix-style based. Here are two different ways on how to read the balances.txt file. The first example reads and displays the balances.txt file a full line at a time. The second example reads the file as a collection of individual fields on each line. This version of the code uses infile.nextline, open close parentheses, in a loop to read a line into line from file string variable and then the system.outprintf to display the line. The loop continues executing as long as there is another line of text on the disk. Here is what the first part of the display would look like. I need to drag the scroll bar thumb up or down to see the full contents of the file being displayed. This code is a little more complicated. Integer, string, and double variables named account number, name, and val are declared and will be used when reading the file as a collection of fields from each line of text on the disk. It is very important that the data on the disk is consistent in its format and does not get messed up or the program will not be able to read it using this method. An advantage of reading the file as a collection of fields is that I will be able to compute the total of all balances. Inside the for loop is a variable named count that could be used if I wanted an average value for all the account balances. The variable currently is being declared as int count equals zero inside the beginning of the for loop. Since this is part of the for loop, the variable count will no longer exist after the for loop is done executing. If you wanted to use the count later in the program, it should be declared at the top along with the other variables and not declared as part of the for loop. Then the loop would be coded as for open parentheses count equals zero semicolon in file has next int open close parentheses semicolon count plus plus. This is the end of the discussion for reading a text file using Java. Bye for now.